good evening from our side. Uh, meanwhile, while we are waiting for other people to join, uh, thank you for being on time, first of all. And while other people are joining, I would just request everyone to simply help us answer this question in the chat box. Um, just wanted to know your motivation and your you know, aspiration behind being an educator. I believe most of you are educators. I believe you're an um, educator here in different um, roles, uh, either being a teacher, a school leader, or a student yourself. Uh, but then there might be something that has been keep, keeping you going. So in the chat box, please help us you know, get idea on why did you choose to be an ed educator and what keeps you going. I will formally begin the session shortly. Uh, while other people will, more people will join, we expect it's going to be houseful. Let's see. Let's see about that. <laughs> All right, Katiza. Thank you. I love working with young people. Their energy is contagious. You are young yourself. Your energy is contagious too, Katiza. <laughs> All right. Irina, thank you. Best way to impact society in the long run. I love to see the improvement each year at our school. Great. Um, Rakia, hello everyone. I love children's be working. Um, sorry, I love children's be working with children. Their vulnerability and authenticity is so inspiring. Indeed, indeed. Um, haha, I'm not an educator in professional sense. I want to enable access to it. All right, thank you. Thank you, um, all of you, for sharing your motivation, your aspiration behind being an educator. Mariah, it has been a while, but I chose to be an educator almost by accident, but I stayed because it was so fulfilling to help kids learn nothing quite like their faces when they are able to finally get a concept. Yes, indeed. And... Um, it might be frustrating sometime when they do not get the concept that you want them to know, but then eventually when they get it, I think the, the uh, smile on their face help us you know, get re-energized. Um, all right. Thank you again, everyone, for sharing your um, motivation, sharing your reason for being an, educa an educator and keeping the fire um, alive. Um, again, I'd like to welcome once again everyone to this session, um, how global understanding can strengthen local communities. Uh, we both country lead from near countries, Nepal and Pakistan would like to welcome you to the session. Without taking much time, I'd like to hand it over to my fellow colleague, uh, who is from Pakistan. She is the country lead uh, from Pakistan. Rabia, over to you. Please do your magic. Uh, please unmute. Yes. No, you're unmute. Evening, everyone. It's great to see you here. Welcome to this wonderful session. And the power of community is undeniable and the power of a global community is incredible. So it's great to see you all here. And uh, this is an African saying that it takes a village to raise a child. So it is something that was said in olden days and it's still very true. But for now, it will take a global village to raise a child. Isn't it? I think you all will agree with that. So as we move forward and we face the challenges of 21st century, and especially after 2020, educators have been facing with various challenges. And what a great uh, you know, forum to connect through 100 and share our ideas and learn from each other that how we can further improve and facilitate all the global citizens. So as we move forward, I believe I'll be sharing my perspective about that 
in order to you know improve the global understanding and to strengthen the local communities i believe that global citizen edu- global citizenship education is the only way forward it is that this is something that is found everywhere in schools mission statements around the world but actually it is something that requires lot of value and virtue it is the need of the r that we all as educators start teaching global citizenship at school i'll give an example of my own school and with a very small step towards global citizenship we all started by having a calendar prepared for every month there is a different country and the children learn about that country throughout the month they start up with the language of the country they go to the you know um the the culture of the country that includes their languages their food dance festivals and everything by the end of the month each child is well equipped with all the information so uh, in the picture you can see it's a beautiful picture of kindergartners and they are studying about china so moving forward to the next slide i will you know share another glimpse where children are delivering the largest lesson in the world and first it was given to the teachers the teachers have delivered it to the children and the children are delivering it back to the community it is an excellent resource available easily on the net for all of you if you try with it you can make the children learn so much there is so much that is there for educators which if we connect and we you know share with each other the understanding of global citizenship education would be better for us so you can see in the picture how the uh, the children are going about it and actually it is all about empowering our students empowering the global learner yes the next slide please okka and another great way of you know embedding global citizenship in schools is organizing virtual cross cultural connections through you know cultural calls and like we have i'm sharing an example of a call we had with ted connect week with india and then there's brazil and then you know the world comes to your classroom it's just a excellent way to use the tool of global connections this is much needed and Uh, you know a global citizen is one who is aware of the wider world and all the activities that are taking place in it and they are willing to work for a peaceful and a sustainable future and a sustainable world that is more fair for us next please so now i'm going to share a short short video with you and keep thinking and asking yourself which school is this and which language is this like where is this school stationed in which part of the world yes please we oh, come on <laughs> Uh, that is one short video that really gives me goops goosebumps every time i go through it so you must be wondering this is uh, possibly a class in france because this was a french song but no it's a class in pakistan and there's a french teacher teaching so teaching various languages to children like french spanish german that's an excellent way of you know strengthening their global citizenship skills and take my words it is very easy people say it's something that maybe is out of the world but it it's not it's the passion you drive your lessons with can take you behind borders ab- above and beyond that's what i believe uh, the next slide please well i leave you with this quote it says the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate action of its members so i believe we all as a global community have a duty a duty to bring together to come together as educators 
for our future generations, for a sustainable world, for a sustainable future. So, and I believe 100 is an excellent forum for it. I believe the opportunity that 100 is providing all the educators of the world to come and listen to each other and to learn from each other. At the end of the day, we as educators are lifelong learners. And it has been such an interesting and exciting experience and journey with 100 of learning and continuous learning, I must say, and fun too. So as we move forward, I have a question for you before we move towards the breakout room. Please suggest innovative ways to improve ICE global understanding. Um, quickly taking you back to 2017, this was one of the events where I actually got to see and meet with people from so many different countries. I think there were around um, 31 countries participating at University of Olu, where I got my master's degree in Finland. And I got to taste a lot of yummy foods as well. Uh, that's me. Probably you can see a little bit of me there. <laughs> uh, one of my colleagues and I were, you know, organizing this event called Festival of Culture. Yes, we had around 31 countries coming together. I don't now, rec I don't even recognize the uh, flags of these countries anymore, but I know that there were 31 countries uh, participating. Uh, but then while I was, you know, getting along with uh, people from different backgrounds, different countries, while I came back, there, were the, there was a question that, that was raised in my mind as well. We are talking about, you know, a lot of global community, global citizenship. Yes. Uh, but what about the community around us? What about the neglected community? What about the underprivileged community? Uh, while trying to go global, sometimes we miss out on, you know, local perspective. Sometimes we miss out on problems that are around us as well. Um, so having this kind of thought in mind during the first um, lockdown in Nepal, uh, around, I, I guess, around the same time, this uh, around same time of the year, 2019 or something, what we did was... Okay we tried to uh, identify some of the community who were struggling to find their way to be heard. They were struggling to, you know, sort of lobby with the government. And it was the cycling community here in Nepal. Uh, we do have this kind of, you know, luxury cycling community, but then for daily commute, people don't cycle and we don't have good cycle lanes as, as there it is in, in Olu. Um, so we thought let's let's you know sort of collaborate with cycling community and have our students think about the cycling community. So what we did we did a short two months course in which we invited um, the community members from cycling community to share some of their challenges, share some of the problems that they are facing. And uh, with the help of students, we try to work on understanding their um, problem. And, you know, we did come up with some solution. Of course, within two months, you cannot find solution to complex problems, but at least the problems were diagnosed uh, pretty well. Um, this was just with the students of uh, the college that I'm currently associated. But then we also thought of why not, you know, have more international community work on local problems. Um, that's when these three institutions from Germany, South Africa, and Nepal came together to work on um, food crisis. So we were, you know, sort of trying to understand how food and agriculture in underdeveloped or developing country are going to waste, they are not properly managed, or, you know, people are suffering from hunger, even in, in some part of our country. So um, professors and students from these three universities worked on sort of hypothetical problem. This time around, the problem itself was pretty vague, hypothetical. It was not real, but then it gave a lot of learning experience to our undergrad and grad students. Uh, with that same, you know, sort of learning with the, with the same uh, sense of fulfillment. We continued our um, 
sort of urge to work on local problems as well. And then um, right now we are designing a course with same university, one more university from Poland, in which we are taking challenges, real challenges from the community itself. This is a Pascal community, a municipality near um, capital city of Kathmandu. So we went there and talked to people who are involved in agriculture, who are involved in small businesses. And then while talking to them, we sort of um, invited two kind of challenge. One was related to agriculture. The other was related to um, bakery items or, you know, small shop that is, hap- that is running in the Pascal community, municipality itself. So starting from December, uh, students from four different institutions, higher education institution, are going to work on solving their problems, their real problems. And this is what we have been trying to practice as ru- cross-country rural innovation. Because out there in Germany, Port- Poland, I think a lot of new things are happening, but their innovativeness, their creativity, their you know, brilliant mind can be used to solve the problems in countries like ours or in any country where there are rural community, where there are problems lying around you, which can be solved from different perspective, from different disciplines, from different angles. So that is something we have been trying to practice uh, in the institution I'm involved. Um, I'd like to invite you to share more of what you have done or what could be done to connect local communities with global partners to solve local problems. So this is my question to all the educators participating in this session. Please think of, of it for a while and also, you know, please kindly share if you have done some practices around solving local problems with um, global perspectives. For this, again, I would like to uh, take you to breakout rooms. Um, Sorry, I I see a raise of hand. Let's have a conversation in the breakout room. And after we come back, if time allows, I would be more than happy to uh, welcome you to, you know, share your thoughts. (music) 